All right, let's go and take a look at module three, dealing with network security controls, protocols, and devices. All right, so our module objectives, understanding the fundamental elements of network security, explaining network access control mechanisms, understanding the different types of access controls, explaining network authentication, authorization, and auditing mechanisms, explaining network data encryption mechanism, describing public key infrastructure, describing various network security protocols, and describing various network security devices. All right, so our fundamental elements of network security, uh, network security controls itself, security protocols, and network security devices. So a completely secure and robust network can be designed with proper implementation and configuration of network security elements. All right, so we'll be looking at examples in each category. All right, so network security controls. All right, so access control. Okay, first off, we need to figure out what we have that's available and then who is going to be accessing that available information. And then we have to figure out exactly what level of access they have. And then we can get a little bit more granular from there. So uh, first off, we have to start off with access control. So that's just really mediating access between a requester and an object. In order to do that, we have to identify who the actual requester is. And that's typically referred to as the subject. We'll see that here in just a second. Um, once identification has taken place, then we have to authenticate or prove you are who you have identified yourself to be. Once that has happened, then we can determine what you are authorized to view. All right, great. So we're mediating access. To do that, we have to identify who you say you are. You have to prove you are who you say you are. And then we'll determine once we've, you know, uh, you've approved who you say you are, we'll determine what you're allowed to do. So there's your authorization comes in. Okay, accounting is going to be a, tra a, a tracking mechanism for determining who has accessed what object and so forth. So uh, we look at like radius and log files and things like that. That's going to deal uh, with accounting. All the radius gives us access as well. All right, cryptography uh, is, wow, it's a big, broad term. So symmetric versus asymmetric hashing algorithms, but cryptography is putting data from a clear text, I'm sorry, a plain text or clear text into an encrypted format and then reversing it. So uh, we're going to talk about some cryptographic algorithms. We're going to talk about symmetric versus asymmetric. We've already talked about hashing algorithms a little bit. We started talking about password authentication. Uh, and then we're also going to wrap this up with a uh, discussion of security of uh, network security policy. So access control. Again, in, uh, and I have a tendency to explain some things ahead of time, so we're going to sort of revisit that once we've got the, the, the slide information up here. Access control, selective restriction of access to a place or other system or network resource. All right. So protects information assets by determining who can and cannot access them. It involves user identification, authentication, authorization, and accountability. I kind of already gave, gave away that story in the previous slide. All right, so we do have some additional terms to go with our access control discussion. First off, the subject is whoever is requesting access. So that's your user account. It can also be an application, depending on how the access is being granted. The object is the resource that the user wants to access, such as a file or even a hardware device. So subject is me, Eric, object is that file I wanna access or that system I wanna get on or that network I wanna get on and so forth. The reference monitor is actually the component, like the security kernel that checks the access control rule for specific restrictions. So this is like the gatekeeper. All right, cool. So when I access an object, there's a referee, so to speak, or reference monitor that is going to determine if that's allowable. It's going to do it by identifying who I am, what the object is, checking an access control list typically, and determining what I am authorized to do with that resource. Okay, the operation is the action taken by the object on the subject. Okay, so the taken on the object, that's a little bit misleading. So what? It, imagine read, write, delete, and so forth. Those are gonna be your operations. All right, cool. So 
the system administrator okay, determines who is going to access what resource. That goes into an authorization database, right? So, which is basically an access control list in a lot of uh, circumstances. The user goes to the authentication function. Authentication, again, identifies them as being whoever they have purported their identity to be. The access control function determines from the authorization database what you're allowed to access. Again, that's the reference monitor or typically the security kernel implementing that. And then that determines what action you get to take upon the object. Got it. All right, so some administrative access controls. All right, so management implementing administrative access controls to ensure the safety of an organization. Security policy. We're going to talk all about security policy, creation, design, the components, and all that. Uh, monitoring and supervising. Separation of duties. Job rotation. Information classification. Okay, so these are all examples of something that is implemented administratively, plain and simple. So we write policy. You have administration or senior management that implements policy and signs on, off on it. Um, separation of duties, declaring that you will never be given too much ability to perform any malicious function. Job rotations, rotating you through your job role to detect any wrongdoing, et cetera, et cetera. So this is our you know, categorical list of administrative access controls. All right, so then physical access controls are going to deal with physical access. Uh, pretty straightforward. So locks, fences. Fences, badge system, security guard, biometric, man trap doors, lighting, fire suppression, etc. All deals with physical access control. So we're taking a look at physical access uh, specifically in its own module. A little bit later on in the course, alarms and so forth. All right, technical access controls. Now you're talking about things that are implemented technically. So system access, authentication. Network access, ACLs, encryption and protocols, auditing, antivirus software, firewalls, all examples of technical access controls or technical controls that are, are being implemented. All right, then we've got three different types of access control that you're going to want to be aware of. Okay, so this is based on how you apply permissions to a resource. All right, direct, discretionary access control. The owner of the object gets to decide who has access and the level of sharing desired. So the user who's granted access to information, it's actually typically the, the owner gets to decide how to protect information. So we're going to have object ownership that's implemented. So I own this file system object or this printer and so forth. The owner sets up a DACL or discretionary access control list, and that determines every subject and their permission level for the object. Okay, got it. Access to files, restricted users and groups based on their identity to which the group and the groups to which the users belong. So role-based access is actually based on groups more or less. So that can actually be implemented through discretionary as well. So true discretionary access is individual user accounts given a certain level of permission by the owner of the resource. Okay, mandatory access control is based on uh, classification. So it does not permit the end user to decide who can access the information. It doesn't permit the user to pass privileges. There's security levels and clearances that are provided for mandatory access control. And then role-based access is going to be based on the fact so when you assign a security label to that resource, anybody that holds that security label gets access to it. That's mandatory access. Role-based access. Now you've got like administrator, database administrator, job roles specifically. So users can be assigned access to systems, files, and fields on a one-by-one -one basis, whereby access is granted the user for a particular file or system. Okay, so think of it like this. You have a job role of end user. You have a job role of customer service worker. You have a job role of administrator. So if I assign a permission to a resource to those categories of jobs, then all I really need to do is put you in that group and you inherit those permissions. So a lot of times you will see role-based access implemented through a discretionary access control model through group membership.